Good day, Minecraftians. Purple Mentat here, bringing you episode 17 of my Clouds of Darkness Let's Play. So, last time, we went and we explored the N Goblin Knight Tower, or Dungeon, or Stronghold. Goblin Knight Stronghold, let's call it that, for a while. And I decided, after I came back, to make a couple of changes. One, I've put the Extreme Ender Armor down, and I am currently using the Essence Infused Armor because... I missed the step up capability. Now, I don't know if that's just on the boots. Maybe I could only replace the one bit. It looks like it is, but we're going to use the whole set for now just to change things up a bit and see if I'm equally invulnerable in this stuff as I was in the extreme ender armor. Also, while the extreme ender armor is kind of neat with the face faceplate and all, it's also rather plain. I just like the look that I get with some of my actual skin showing through a little better with the essence infused stuff. Even though it's not a whole lot, and honestly, I rarely see my character model, I don't like to have that weird faceplate staring out from my inventory. Now, one important thing I noticed when I was getting everything cleaned up and depositing everything from all of my bags into the various chests around here is the Wildecraft items, the Ring of Wealth, and the Mithril Square Shield that I have do not repair when they're not in my inventory. When they're in the Wildecraft inventory, the talisman of repair that I'm wearing as my belt does not affect them. So just keep that in mind and every now and then make sure you pull them out and get them repaired. They have a ton of durability and they're not likely to die anytime soon, but just important to note. Also, I did discover that I was a giant derp when I was playing around with the ADD because if I press the oh with the adjustable bag i'm sorry if i press the num pad plus sign well it only opens it up when mouse keys is turned off because otherwise it's ignoring the numpad plus so now i can easily access both my adjustable bag or my backpack with key presses from my inventory and i can keep them off of my hotbar and my golden bag of holding still needs to be on the hot bar, but that's okay because I've got two others that I'm able to easily access in other ways. So let's get our everything arranged the way I like it. There we go. Yeah, that, that'll get us that'll get us places. And let's head straight back to where we left off. Uh hang on, where was it? Yes, Night Castle Stairs. This could do a little bit better with the interface showing you exactly where you are. You only get seemingly the first five letters or the first word really to tell you where you're going. I'm not sure how to change that. Anyway, off we are. And here we are. Oh, right. Can't see without night vision in here because I have not been lighting things up. Now, we're searching for the boss room, which I'm hoping will be this direction since I'm actually finding goblin knights. <laughs> I have no idea where it would normally be found as I have not explored this area before. Oh, look at that. Diamond sword. Yay! So, let's keep going. Got... Hello! Baby fire zombie. That's terrifying. Or would be if I wasn't practically immortal. Uh, huh. Wow. FPS took a serious hit. I'm going to restart the client real quick. And hopefully that'll make things a bit better. Sometimes when transitioning between dimensions, it gets a little cranky. So, I will be right back. Alrighty, restart complete, and FPS is a lot happier now than it was. Continuing my sprint through the dungeon. You die. What the heck? It just dropped raw swordfish. That was a spider. Bad, 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 bad. Hello. Oh, you're just a helmet crab. What are you? Lower goblin. Oh, right. The... Eh. What? What? Oh, soul. That's okay. We can ignore that. Plenty of enemies, but not really finding a boss room like I'm looking for, unfortunately. Hi. 
What have we here? Steel Leaf Sword, Firefly, Poppy, Iron Ingot, I'll take. Uh, I guess I'll grab the poppies. I'm out of them back home. Bane of Arthropods 2 is not an enchant I care about, so it stays. Alright, so there's not a lot of fun, interesting new things going on. Ooh, got a heart. I'm gonna have to go hunting some wither skeletons, get those necrotic bones, make the rest of the heart canisters. Then I'll really be in good shape in terms of undiability. So I'm going to uh, do a bunch more exploring off camera because this place is kind of dull at the moment. Once I find the Night Phantom boss, then I shall return and we can do the boss fight and get some more stuff done. See you soon, folks. Still looking around. Still haven't found the thing. Did run into a really annoying group of enchanted baby zombies. One of them pulled items off of my hotbar and the other one caused explosions which destroyed things. So I only lost my ender fruit, luckily, but I did have my helmet pulled off for a while. That could have been bad. Didn't end as badly as it could have, though. I'm floating right now just so I can take a moment and show you just how massive this place is. I'm using the journey map mapping mod, which I'll put in the down below. And you can see that it does map underground as I light things up. This is where I came in. I've been through all kinds of stuff. There's a tree in that room. And these are the lava pit rooms. And I'm way down here now. Like, this is a significant portion of the biome that I've covered at this point. Uh, let me see if there's a... Yeah, if I turn off caves, you can see that the entryway was over here somewhere. Uh, right about there. And I've come a good... Uh, I mean, it's covering like a hundred chunk square area. It's crazy. So yeah, um, this is taking a while. Back to it. Alright folks, actually right after what I was just saying, I noticed on my map a room that was pre-lit. And I decided I wasn't going to spend my time running around trying to figure out how to get there. I tumbled right through the underbrick and the obsidian. And here we are, the night phantom room. Now, these guys, they toss uh, tools everywhere and you have to defeat all six of them. But the only one you can damage is the one that currently has a body inside of it. There's one. Apparently, you only need to kill the one to get the achievement. All right, there's two. So, yeah. When you go up against the Night Phantoms, uh, here, let's get rid of some stuff so I can... Let's actually back out a moment because I have too much stuff in my inventory. And I want to get this Phantom Plate stuff because it looks so cool. And, you know, that's a really good reason to collect items if I say, do say so myself. You know what, Osmium Boots, you can go rot there on the ground forever. Uh, no, not the golden bag of holding. I wanted my adjustable bag. Yes. And... I'm being shot at by... Or not shot at. Oh yeah, there we go. Uh, there. I've got a full 10 or 11 spaces open now. That'll be plenty for the last few night phantoms. Oh, there's one. Ow. Ow. Yep. It's tossing nightly tools all over the place. These guys do a lot of damage if you're not in ridiculous armor. So you're probably... Like, my armor and regen bracelet are what are keeping me alive through this while I run in circles and try to kill them. Your turn. There we go. There's only the two more. And it's you. Oh, no. It's neither there. It's you. Come here. Last one. Now I just need to wait for him to get possessed. As you can see, I can't really do anything to it until it is. There we go. Night Phantom's down. Chest get. Containing a bunch of enchanted phantom armor. Phantom plate, phantom helm, and a bunch of knightly goodies. And a helmet crab. <laughs> Alright, I want to see where this thing is. 
The fact that they surrounded it with something easily breakable, well, relatively easily breakable like obsidian, made me not worry too much about breaking in. Unbreaking 3, efficiency 3, nice. Protection 3, unstable? I worry about that. <laughs> yeah. Now this stuff is not as good as the armor I'm already wearing, but it's going to make a cool trophy to put in my trophy wall. Alright, now that I have beaten the Night Phantoms, the next trick is to get out. And I've got a couple of options. Um, one, it would be very easy to pillar to the surface from where I'm at, as I've got a ton of building blocks, there's an endless amount of building blocks around me, and yeah, that wouldn't be a problem. I would end up probably just flying instead of pillaring, but the point is to be able to do it without using the fl uh, flight, as flight is something that you're really not supposed to have access to. I'm not supposed to have access to this kind of weaponry and armor either, but um, there's limits. I'm not going to risk death just to do things legit. Not when I only get to die the once. So yeah, it looks like there uh, to get back to the exit would be a significant period of time. That would be the other option, would be to f use the map to try to find my way back to points known, and then follow that to get to where I came in, but that's an awful lot of work. So what we're going to do, we're going to make certain that we're not underneath the Urgast Tower. Oh, we're not. We're a long way away. And we're just going to pillar straight up using our Extreme Ender Pick and our Metok. Normally, you want to avoid digging straight up because, you know, it can be very problematic, but when you're going from Y20 to Y30, you're probably in fine shape to do so. It's not that much of a worry. All right, so let's follow the magic map and let's get our way to the Urgas Tower and at least make a bookmark there. And then I think we'll go get, get prepared for the Labyrinth live stream that's coming in a little while. If you're watching this Afterwards, you will be able to find the live stream linked from the playlist. Uh, I'm not entirely certain how I'll link it. It'll be in the description or it'll be next on the playlist. You are welcome to skip a lot of the, li the live stream episodes as it's going to be hours of me going through the labyrinth, most likely. But, hello zombie. Hello. Ugh, I hate those spirit wolves. Ah. Uh can't see anything. Uh, but it should be a good time. Ah, there we are. There's the... Ow, stop it. Stop it. Stop it. Stop it. Here we go. Big old break in the middle of the canopy and the Urgast's Tower. That's our next Twilight Forest uh, goal. Ooh, that's neat. Infested tower wood. I don't think I can break this stuff very easily at all. I mean, it is breakable. But, that's also like defeating the purpose. Hang on, put that back. What beating the knights did for us gets us the achievement which causes these Carmenite blocks to obey. They are so cool. <laughs> that is amazing. I'm going to have a lot of fun in here. Oh my. Something bad happened here. Ooh. Free netherrack. Nice. Anyway. We're going to go back home. I'm going to travel home and... Reset the client as it does not seem to like dimensional travel. And once I'm back home and I get my inventory cleaned out... I'll be back to make some new sub new preparations for the trip to, well, the trip through the labyrinth. <laughs> ah, so much fun. All right, where do I want to make my page? Right over here. Yeah, that's a good good place for it. You go away, you come here. 
So just a uh, right click. Ergast. Done. And I'm going to get rid of this um, night castle stairs. It is no longer useful. All right. See you soon, folks. Alrighty, folks. Back home again. I have everything out of the inventory. Got the bag all set up with a ton of carpet and cobblestone to take to the labyrinth. And I want to show you how I make my torches these days. I use glowstone because I can easily create lots of glowstone dust by putting a stack of glowstone in furnace pattern to get 48 glowstone dust. And then I transform a stack of sticks and a stack of glowstone into two stacks of torches, which my Sojourner staff immediately begins to consume, which is fantastic. Uh, so I'm loading up lots of torches into the staff to take with me to the labyrinth because I don't know how many it's going to take to get through there and get everything lit to my standards. Now, one other thing I want to make before we go to the labyrinth is something called the resupply upgrade. And this is made with an upgrade case, a hopper, and two chests. You put it on your bag and it will keep anything that you have in your inventory supplied from the bag. So if I were to put down some of this carpet, as you can see, it's getting resupplied from the bag. Excellent. Hmm, though it seems to be resupplying entire stacks every time. That's weird. I don't know why I have like three stacks of carpet in my inventory now. Oh, that's why. Because every time I pick one up, it then fully resupplies from the bag because reasons. <laughs> oh, anyway, it's not, you know, perfectly beautiful, but it does the job fairly well. And now I can just carry a ton of cobblestone and a ton of carpet with me and make my cell uh, put it down and not have to worry about it because it'll always, always be kept resupplied. Now, making that carpet has been an interesting experiment. I've been taking my essence of the spider and transmuting it into string, and then that string becomes wool, and then that wool becomes carpet. And I'll show you the uh, path of it just the one time so you can see how it goes. Three stacks of essence of the spider becomes eight stacks of string, which then becomes two stacks of wool. One, two, three, four. And two stacks of wool becomes three stacks of carpet. Simple as that. Doesn't take a whole lot of doing, and you can easily shift click most of it into place, which is rather nice. So yeah, lots of carpet available. Lots of easy. I like that. All right, so that's most of the preparations I needed to make complete, in fact. So we're going to work on something a little new. I've been working this entire time on magical crops, and I now am at the point with magical crops that I have everything I need for something really, really fun. And I'm sure some of you watching have figured out where I'm going with this, but I want to get into Project E. This is a remake, kind of a fan, um, a, a love letter to the old Equivalent Exchange 2, which was a mod that existed on its own plane of power. It does not fit with the power level of your average Minecraft mod. It's definitely much more powerful than, for example, Industrial Craft or Thermal Expansion or anything like that. So to get into it, I'm going to need some lapis essence. Uh, we'll take just a stack of each actually for now. So I'm going to need some essence of uh, lapis lazuli. I'm going to need some essence of emerald. And I'm going to need some essence of diamond. And let me go grab everything else that I know that I will be needing for this. And once I'm ready to start crafting and putting things together, I'm also going to need probably all 32 extreme essence that I currently have to accomplish what I want to do before I go into the labyrinth. So let me gather some supplies and I'll be right back to show you jumping into Project E as well as some of the fun things that we can do with it. All right, I think I have everything I need to get a good start on things. Oh, actually, yes, we're good. So 
One of the very first things you can make in Project E, and we're not going to be able to cover everything that the mod can do this episode, there's only 10 minutes left. One of the very first things to make in Project E is your Energy Collector Mark 1. And this is a relatively cheap recipe, except for the fact that it requires blocks of diamond, which is why I made myself two stacks of diamond out of a, some of the extra diamond essence that I had. Now, the one thing I do need for this is going to be a number of slab furnaces, which I did not think of at the time. So, let's use up, well, we can use four of the cobblestone slabs that we have because these convert. And I know that I'm going to want an awful lot of these, so I'm going to make a good bit. We'll just, we'll, we'll start with eight slab furnaces worth. As you can see, my adjustable bag already refilled that cobblestone for me, which is very nice. And now we need to put some glass on top and glowstone on the sides. Come on, cooperate. Simple as that. Now we have a whole bunch of energy collector mark one. And I've got more glass cooking up, which because I know that I'm going to need it in a moment. Now what the energy collector does is set it down in the world. And if it has enough light, it will begin collecting EMC. And that EMC can be used to upgrade your fuel. This is actually, if you happen to have an awful lot of glowstone, one potential way to get redstone. As you can see, it upgraded from coal to gunpowder. I believe it goes from gunpowder to redstone. Let's check their EMC value on redstone. EMC value on redstone is 64, so I think we skipped right past. Oh yeah, uh, you're going to want to start with charcoal if you're looking to get redstone, I think. Hang on, let's double check. Charcoal, EMC 32, which is similar to, glows, uh, to redstone. I'm not 100% certain. I know that... Char uh, what you call it. Redstone is a potential option. It is one of the things that you can get. And you can also see that this slowly fills up as it approaches the next tier. I believe it's a strict doubling, but I could be wrong. Let's see when it ticks over. It's been a long time since I've directly messed with these. Yep, and then it doubled into Glowstone, which is 384. And if you go looking, you can probably find something that is uh, 768 EMC, and that will be what the glowstone will upgrade into. Now, there's two different types of EMC. You've got your fuel and your matter EMC. And when you're first starting out with Project E, those two, the separation between the two is important. One of the other things that you can do with the energy collector is to use it with an uh, antimatter relay. That's what it's called. Let me... Grab a bit of this glut. That was sandstone, not sand. Well then, hang on. Let me get some glass together. And then we'll be able to use this. We're just gonna get 10 going right here real quick. Dupe. Quick primer on how to make glass very quickly. Use your hammer. Make gravel. Use your hammer. Make sand. Gotta love it. And then into here it goes. Having a hammer that repairs itself as well as a bag that will automatically feed you is amazing for making use of vein miner. So let's grab that antimatter relay that I was talking about. And I know that I'm eventually going to want at least four of them, so I don't mind making three right now. And as you can see, this is also the Anti-Matter Relay Mark 1. You can upgrade these, but we're not nearly at that point yet. So we're going to put an energy collector down, and then we're going to set the Anti-Matter Relay on top of it, and you'll see that it's now the relay that's beginning to charge. Well, if I put another energy collector here, and here, and here, and on the back of it, you can see it's charging rather rapidly now. If I take a bit of coal and I stick it into here, you'll see that this is charging rather rapidly. The antimatter relay, ooh, alchemical coal it upgraded to. There we go, block of redstone. After your alchemical coal, it will upgrade to a block of redstone, which you can then turn into dust if you so need to. You can also get blaze powder. I wonder if I can get blaze rods this way. That would be kind of amazing, actually. In any case, the antimatter relay will take the production of any 
collectors nearby and funnel it towards one collector. And it automatically knows how to do that because it's based on whichever collector is currently active. Huh, blocks of coal can be upgraded. Neat. You can also put in a stack of an item and we'll upgrade each one of those to the next one before it starts working. Your block of coal turns into glowstone. Well then, yeah, in, it, it continues just like that. You don't lose anything by changing things out either. Just changes the level that it's at. Now, this is, this is a fantastic way to start into it. And you can set this up fairly early. In fact, I probably should have set one up a long time ago just to start slowly, passively increasing things. Mobius fuel. Now we're into some interesting stuff. This will burn, as you can see. Um, hang on, I don't, there we go. 1,600 versus 256,000. This will burn something like 128 or so times. Hang on. 256,000 divided by 1,600. That will burn as long as 160 pieces of coal. You can also turn your Mobius fuel into blocks of Mobius fuel. Oh, I'm sorry, that's 25,600. Never mind, that's significantly less. <laughs> uh, 16 pieces of coal. That's a little bit different. But you can turn your Mobius fuel into a Mobius fuel block, which is 230,400 or about the time of 144 pieces of coal, or enough time to cook 18 stacks of items in a furnace. And yes, these things can be burned in a survi survivalist generator. You put a block of Mobius fuel in there, and it's basically going to last forever. Now, that's all well and good, and it's a lot of fun to set up a good energy collector block like that. In fact, I'm going to make certain I have at least one more right now so that I can complete that little star of them and let it kind of run passively while I do other things. But this is certainly not the only thing that the mod can do. It does, it's not just for upgrading fuel at an extremely accelerated rate. As you can see, there's a transfer limit. It can only move things just so fast. That energy is draining out of here as quick as it can, but that quick as it can is actually somewhat slow. Aroma backup kicks off, no problem. And our Mobius fuel upgrades into, I think, Eternalist fuel? Nope, alchemical coal block. And then from there, we should get the Eternalist fuel. Anyway, moving on, we need to make ourselves a new tool to really get cooking with uh, Project E. And to do that, we need a Philosopher's Stone. Philosopher's Stone uses Essence of Gold, Essence of Redstone, and the Purple Gem from Magic Crops, which I can't use because, shift click because of the Master Infusion Stone. So you turn four Essence of Dye and four Extreme Essence into a Purple Gem. This is why I needed to get so much Extreme Essence rolling. Now that Purple Gem, right in the center with our essence of redstone and our essence of gold creates a ridiculously awesome tool called the alchemist stone now this guy um as it shows you can do a number of different things oh left clicking will change the orientation hang on left clicking changes the blocks orientation right click does nothing shift right click does pick it up okay so there's that Okay, it changes it to whichever direction you're currently at, uh, facing. So I'm not going to easily be able to turn this collector this way, which is a shame. Anyway, uh, the other cool thing is it, uh, it does is it cause, well, if you're mousing over it and press C, you open up a crafting table crafting grid, which is really nice, I think. Uh, let's do a thing here. Uh, never mind. We won't do that right now. The other great thing the Philosopher's Stone can do is it can transmute items in your inventory. Not... Hang on. You need to actually be in a 3x3 grid for most of the transmutation. But you can put the Philosopher's Stone in its own grid, which is kind of fun. For example, I can upgrade my coal to alchemical coal. And as you can see, it uses the same EMC value. 4, uh, four times 128 gets you your 512. 
and then that alchemical coal can be upgraded to Mobius fuel. As you can see, again, 4 times 512 gets you 2048. We're going to make an awful lot of this stuff. Let me do a little bit of crafting time here. And then when you have four Mobius fuel, you'll be able to up that, upgrade that into Eternalist fuel. This stuff is relatively important to the long-term health of the mod. Well, your, the long-term usage of the mod, I should say. Fortunately, I'm at a weird point where I need to make just a little bit more. Oh, you know what? My inventory is now completely clogged. That's not exactly a surprise, given the person in charge of production at the moment. Uh, let's make another two collectors to deal with that issue. Because that'll take care of that guy. And now I can go add these to the mix with another anti with, by putting these antimatter relays here and adding these energy collectors there and there. Well, this thing's now going even faster. All right, more upgrading. So I want alchemical coal and I can't shift click because I didn't have that in my inventory for one, but it is a tool. It is a non-stacking item. So shift click is no bueno. It does not like it. Oh, and you cannot use inventory tweaks. So you cannot hold up and click to put things into this one. That's a bit of a shame. Three, two, three, four. I need to get this to actually 20 right now. There we are. Now I'll be able to make the rest of the Mobius fuel that I need. To make two more Eternalist fuel. And I don't know if this stuff upgrades any further. I don't believe it does. No, it does not. Though I'm pretty sure that this over here is attempting to upgrade it into a, an Eternalist fuel block. Um, but I need to not let that happen, actually, for the time being. Now, as you can see, doing this consumes a fair bit of coal. You're running through your resources rather rapidly to make your Eternalist fuel this way. It takes a full stack of coal to make a single Eternalist fuel. Using this goes a lot... Uh, goes a lot slower, but you generate more total resources in the end. It's literally creating more stuff out of pure sunlight, which is amazing. Now, the reason I wanted to get myself up to six Eternalist Fuel is because of what this stuff can be used for. With eight, oh, I actually needed eight, not six. With eight Eternalist Fuel and a blue gem, you can make dark matter, which is an extremely important part of Project E. Unfortunately, we just don't have two more right now. We're going to have to wait a bit for this to finish up. Now, that transmutation mechanic goes a lot further. You can use a Philosopher's Stone to convert iron into gold, gold into diamond. Uh, hang on a second. Where we go? Gold back down into iron. Diamonds back down into gold. There's a whole bunch. Oh, actually, no. Most of the recipes I remember are gone. You used to be able to transmute between clay, ender pearls whole bunch of other useful things that you could do with the Philosopher's Stone. Now, the cool thing that I hope it can still do is you can put some cobblestone down and right-click the cobblestone to change it. Changes into grass. And if I hold shift, it changes into stone. The stone can be transmuted into grass as well. Hmm. And then there's a number of other things that you can also transmute around using the Philosopher's Stone. I believe that sand and gravel is another potential transmutation group. Boom, boom, there we go. So let's put this down. And you'll note that there's kind of a little charge bar underneath. That allows you to change the radius you're affecting by pressing V or Shift V normally. So if I right-click this gravel, it turns into sand, and the sand then turns into cobblestone, grass. Oops, that might be a problem. I don't know if I can possibly get it back. 
Uh, yeah, I think that I, uh, it is now permanently cobblestone. Huh, whoops. Hey, where'd you go? There you are. And if I shift right click gravel, I get sandstone, which apparently cannot be transmuted. Let's see if I can hammer sandstone into sand. Yes, I can. Awesome. Right clicking sand creates cobblestone. Shift right clicking creates grass. All right. It's a weird, uh, weird little interpretation of the equivalent exchange to mechanics. Now, I'm going to finish building a bunch more energy collectors and a couple more antimatter relays. I need two more and a handful more energy collectors to make the full flower. I'll probably make myself a little stone platform over here. In fact, that's one of the most fun things that you can do with Project E is lay out a bit of cobblestone. Uh, actually, here, let me show you. I can show you very quickly over here as we're running short on time. This cobblestone wall, or this cobblestone floor, not exactly appealing, but if I increase the radius a couple of times, and then I give her a right click, it all turns, or a shift. Right, so you can turn grass into sand by shift right clicking. Ah, uh, shift right click your cobblestone, on the other hand, and you will transmute it all into stone without the need to put it through a furnace. Um, right click, shift right click, there we go. Ah, that was, that would have been terrifying if I still, you know, worried about falling into the void. <laughs> here, come here, sand. Let's uh, do this the right way now. There we are. Whoops. Totally don't want you. That's a little bit better. Right, control right click does not do what you want it to do. Shift right click does. Awesome. Now things are a little bit less ugly over here. Except for, you know, the giant missing gap that I accidentally created. We'll be doing a lot more with Project E over the next few episodes. I've got a lot of plans for it because, well, it has a lot of cool abilities and a lot of cool items in it that I want. So we'll be making them. But that's going to have to wait for next time, as this time we're just about out of t we're just about out of time. <sighs> you know, sometimes I swear I don't even know how to words. That's all right, though. Hope you've enjoyed this episode. If you have, please leave a like. Let me know what I did well. If you have not, please leave a dislike and tell me what I can do better next time. And I will be seeing you in a couple of hours on the live stream to explore the labyrinth.